Hello and welcome to Mining Network's monthly Nickel Outlook. I'm joined again by Greg Miller from Benchmark Mineral Intelligence, expert on all things cobalt and nickel related. So Greg, thanks again for joining us. Uh, let's have a, a quick backstory and a, I guess provide a bit of a scene of what's been going on with nickel since the pandemic struck. We saw uh, COVID lows of around 11,000. Probably some thanks needs to go to Elon Musk in a way uh, for the rally we saw after that. We saw peaks of around 20,000 US dollars um, throughout 2020. Uh, we did then see some contraction in 2021 around March, it sort of dipped down to around the $16,000 mark, though we have been since then on a, on a bit of continuous uptick. And we're actually not too far now from where we were before in 2020 in terms of peaks, where we're sitting around the $19,000 mark as of today, the Tuesday, the 24th of August. Um, perhaps you could give us a little bit of background as to what exactly has been going on um, over the last few years and, and why have we seen this uptick in the price um, recently? Yeah, the main um, drivers of the, the, the price increase recently have been strong demand from both the stainless steel sector and the growing battery market. Um, and, th and this is kind of in, com in combination with the general rally across commodity markets we've seen since last year's pandemic low. Um, and then on top of this, we've also seen some supply disruption, most notably uh, due to an industrial accident at Nornickel, and the recent strike at Bali Subbury plant in Canada, which kind of really have helped support prices um, this year. Um, and then maybe focusing more on the battery side, um, we, we're really seeing persistent raw material tightness um, for, for the battery industry at the moment, um, really emerging this year, both on, on the kind of um, surging demand and also um, uh, let, uh, output not being maybe as, as strong from some of the from mines in, in, in Southeast Asia, which were geared up to, to supply the battery industry in 2021. So that's kind of really caused some, some raw material tightness. And we're seeing maybe a move back towards um, nickel briquette dissolution for, for nickel sulfate production. Back in 2007, we saw phenomenal nickel prices reaching almost 50,000 US dollars. Um, for a very brief period before crashing back down to around $10,000 the following year. Uh, can you give us a, a bit of a reminder actually what happened there? And um, is it possible that this price volatility is, is something that's going to be a common theme with nickel moving forward as well? To give a bit of history, nickel's bull run reached, as you mentioned, fifty thousand, just over $50,000 back in 2007 during the kind of last commodity super cycle, which was driven in large part by the industrialization and urbanization of China during the, the, uh, the 2000s. Um, due to these high prices, uh, Chinese stainless steel producers really pursued a, a low cost substitute for class one nickel, um, which because prices weren't sustainable at $50,000 a ton, clearly. Um, so began utilizing a, a previously undeveloped low grade form of nickel called nickel pig iron, which, um, which had, had previously been viewed in the West as kind of excessively carbon intensive to produce. Um, so this development uh, as a lower cost alternative to, to, to class one um, ultimately kind of halted nickel's bull run in its tracks, and which is why we saw uh, prices crash the following year. Um, and in terms of volatility going forward, I, I mean, I don't, I don't really expect any kind of anything that dramatic um, to, to happen again. Um, I think the market now has, has fundamentally changed with the ramp up of, of NPI and nickel pig iron in, in Indonesia, um, and we. We now have kind of uh, multiple routes for, for the battery industry, which is obviously the biggest growth market going forward. I mean, they come with, with their own challenges, but um, I, yeah, I, I don't see that kind of volatility returning. We have uh, with nickel mainly um, the source from laterite, um, and then you also have the sulfite deposits around the world. Uh, could, you, could you give us a, a bit of an overview or a breakdown of where exactly uh, these deposits are, are mainly located, where, where most of the supply is coming from at the moment? And and is this likely to change moving forward um, as, as we move into sort of the next 10 years um, where, where most of your forecasts lay? Yeah, sure. Um, so until recently, really, until the, I guess the mid-2010s, the, mid the majority of uh, nickel was derived from sulfide uh, ore deposits, uh, which were found in, uh, and are found in countries such as Russia, Canada, and Australia. However, um, with the... With the development of uh, MPI and also new HPAL high pressure acid leach projects announced in Indonesia, this kind of relationship is really starting to change. And we saw in 2017 that uh, laterite ores for the first time, nickel derived from laterite ores for the first time, um, kind of 
overtook uh, uh, sulfide ores as the, the dominant uh, source of nickel. So we, we're now seeing that lateralize the cost accounting for around 62% of the overall market. And looking forward with the, over, with the vast majority of new supply really coming out of Indonesia, um, that, that kind of relationship is expected to strengthen. Um, and we were expecting uh, lateralized to kind of account for 73% by the end of the decade. With, I mean, ultimately, there's very few sulfide um, projects since in the pipeline. Um, nothing that, for the battery industry anyway, that, that will, will, will be uh, substantial enough to kind of feed their growing demand. Yeah, you did mention there, obviously, they, they are substituting nickel um, for, for cobalt in, in some instances with batteries. Um, but nickel isn't potentially the, the silver bullet. That There are still some problems to overcome with the metal, aren't there? Definitely. Um, I, I mean, the, the, um, the issues in the cobalt market are, are well documented, but uh, nickel has its own uh, DSG risk, particularly around um, the environmental impact of nickel mining. And with most kind of new supply coming out of Indonesia, um, particularly for the battery industry, there's a, there's a host of environmental risks for the automakers and cell producers linked to tailings management at high pressure acid lead plants, um, Indonesia's power mix being dominated by thermal coal and, and deforestation associated with, um, with building new nickel plants. So this kind of, there's a matrix really of ESG risks for the um, automakers and, and cell producers alike to, to kind of overcome in, in their nickel supply chain. Um, so um, this, these challenges may see, um, or particularly in the West, there's a, there may be a reluctant source from Indonesia, which again, most of the new supply out of Indonesia is being built by Chinese owned companies. Um, and it's the Chinese dominated supply chain merging. Indonesia is merging much like the DRC in Cobalt. And for, for Western automakers, um, particularly in the US, where um, the Biden administration highlighted its, its wish to kind of rely on allied nations. These, these represent um, serious um, supply risks for, for their battery supply chain because there realistically won't be enough nickel without Indonesia. With that in mind, what's what's the current forecast coming out of Benchmark in relation to demand, supply, and also your, I guess, your 10-year looking forward pricing um, yeah, consensus? So Benchmark, we're, we're forecasting, we're actually forecasting the nickel market to remain in surplus until the mid uh mid to late 2020, um, where we when we then start to see a deficit begin to emerge. Um, however, but I think it is, it's important to caveat with that, that deficits in kind of battery suitable nickel may emerge may emerge quicker than this. Um, so we saw in March 2021, uh, Qingshan announced that they were begin to convert um, nickel pig iron to mass for the battery industry, um, which appeared uh, to solve much of the kind of Future supply uh, issues for, for the battery industry, which is why we saw prices um, really really crash in, 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 the, in March 2021. However, as I've mentioned, there are there are a number of ESG risks associated with this, um, and for the, the nickel pig iron to map route, this really comes down to the carbon intensity of that process. Um, with kind of initial estimates suggesting that it's it, it's several times more carbon intensive to produce nickel sulfate via the MPI to map route than it is. Um, from MHP or or, um, or or more traditional kind of class one metal, so there does appear to be a reluctance from from Western automakers and cell producers to use this material, um, which is a, again a major challenge and which could see uh, deficits emerge quicker than uh, than being forecasted. And in terms of the the pricing of of nickel, what, what what's that looking like moving forward? I mean, it's hard to say because the much depends on how much this kind of the ESG risk. Can be solved by the, um, the the in Indonesia because if if the if challenges um, related to carbon intensity of these processes are overcome, the incentive price will be much lower for the new nickel supply. If they can't, then um, it, it it could be substantially higher. So, I mean, I, I see nickel prices kind of in in the fifteen to seventeen thousand dollar a ton range over, over the next few years, but. I mean, things change very quickly in the nickel market, so it's always hard to kind of predict. Thank you so much for your time today, Greg. Um, for those of you who want to follow the story um, on, a, on a bit more of a consistent basis, you can follow Greg on Twitter. His handle is Greg Miller underscore BMI. Uh, lots of really good information and continuous updates on there. So check that out. And also I will be putting the link to Benchmark's weekly email updates 
Um, again, they're free, so definitely worth having a look and keeping on top of those as well. Uh, and like I said, they'll all be on the links below. Um, if you do have any questions for next month on any of the commodities we cover, you can email insights at miningnetwork.co.uk and we'll try our best to, uh, to cover them and answer them. Thank you.